welcome to another edition of Hoods. I'm your host, Tara Johnson. Today we'll be featuring Uptown, a Chicago neighborhood that is striving toward economic progress. On this episode of Hoods, we will learn how this hood came to be. Then we'll take a visit to a tattoo shop, a bookstore, a youth outreach center, an inspirational cafe, an improv theater, and we will end up where else? The local pub. All of this on this edition of Hoods. First, we'll take a trip back in time to learn about the bumpy ride Uptown has had. Mike Scorba will show us all that this particular hood has been through, some big ups and even some bigger downs. From the days of mobster activity and Frank Sinatra to the economic downturn of the mid to late 20th century, Uptown, believe me, has seen it all. Uptown Chicago a neighborhood that is striving towards economic progress and positive evolution through development of culture. But to really understand what Uptown is today and where it is going, we need to first understand where this hood has been. Uptown, Chicago's community number three is one of the oldest neighborhoods in Chicago. Though scarcely settled for most of the 19th century, Uptown has become one of the most racially diverse and densely populated areas in the entire city. It started with the Graceland Cemetery. Opened in 1861, Today is the resting place to several former Illinois governors and Chicago mayors. At the same time, John Lewis Cochran was starting large construction developments like Cedar Lawn, Edgewater, and Sheridan Park, which brought in many upper middle class and wealthy families to the area who could afford to move out of the chaotic city. Cochran also played a key role in having the Northwestern Elevated Railroad tracks, or the Red Line, as we know them today, to lead right through the heart of Uptown. 1900. The tracks are complete and the area explodes with visitors. Suddenly Uptown was flooded with city goers traveling to the newly expanded shopping districts for their now possible afternoon outings. Soon enough, as the Roaring Twenties was in full swing, the swing era found a very comfortable home in Uptown. The newly opened Uptown Aragon and Riviera Theaters would show feature films and host stars from Frank Sinatra to Glenn Miller, Duke Ellington, and Benny Goodman. Al Capone's right-hand man, Machine Gun Jack McGrun, owned the hottest jazz club in town, the Green Mill Lounge, and Charlie Chaplin would be a common face on the streets. Uptown was really becoming the place to be. But the honeymoon didn't last long. As the housing market slumped during World War II, many of the larger homes were divided up so they could be sold to lower income families. But the biggest dagger in Uptown side may have been the extension of Lakeshore Drive. Instead of Uptown being the destination for all those travelers, it became just another neighborhood to pass by as you traveled north. As the troops came home from World War II, the suburbs were becoming the ideal place to raise a family, not the city. This deserted even more homes in Uptown. This brought the property value so low, the area became a target for huge masses of poor southern whites looking to move north from the Appalachian Mountains. With so much less revenue from tourists and high-income residents, Uptown's high-class venue struggled. The Uptown Theater and Aragon Ballroom weren't able to pull a profit from showing feature films anymore, so they had to evolve into live music venues instead, which worked well for a while. They hosted names like the Rolling Stones, The Doors, The Grateful Dead, and even U2. But this didn't last forever. In 1981, the Uptown Theater closed its doors and has been abandoned ever since. As the later half of the century rolled on, large numbers of Asian and African Americans moved into the now subdivided affordable housing. Uptown struggled for an identity and has been struggling financially as well. Today, people and businesses in Uptown are making huge strides in bringing the community together to thrive and to make Uptown a popular destination like it once was. There are all sorts of new and interesting stores opening in Uptown that it's giving it a new lease on life. A mega target was recently opened as well as new hair salons, a smoke shop, tattoo factory, and inviting restaurants and taverns are helping turn Uptown into a hood of the 21st century. But the biggest news in Uptown is the recent purchase of the Uptown Theater by Jam Productions, who plan to fully renovate it and hopefully create another surge of prosperity and flair like it did over 80 years ago. Though history has not always been on Uptown side, perhaps the future will shed new light on this truly one-of-a-kind hood. Wait a minute, that was 
quite a history. It's really amazing how much that neighborhood has changed in less than a century. But here to tell us about that and so much more is our resident uptown historical know-it-all, Mr. Mike Scorvin. Know-it-all. <laughs> <laughs> how you doing, Tara? I'm good. Thanks, Mike, for being here. No problem. Thanks for now, having me. You touched on the Uptown Theater right. in your piece, but it's not just some rundown theater, right? Absolutely not. Uptown Theater is maybe one of the most important parts of Uptown. Okay. It was actually built, what a lot of people don't know about, was built by the same company that built the Chicago Theater right here in downtown. Mm -hmm. It's called Balbon and, and Katz. Okay. And um, to show you how fast things were moving in the Roaring Twenties, mm -hmm. the company built the Chicago Theater in 1921. Mm -hmm. Just a year and a half later, they started planning the Uptown Theater. Okay. So it was 1923 when they started planning it. Mm -hmm. The doors open August 18th, 1925. Less than two years from starting to plan it to opening the doors, it opened, which is kind of incredible when you think about how large it is. Mm -hmm. It seemed like they had a, uh, a slogan when they opened the Uptown Theater called the Acre of Seats in the Magical City. The Acre of Seats. The Acre of the Seats. Magical and it's not an exaggeration. Okay. Uh, there's over 4,300 seats in the Uptown Theater, mm -hmm. which seems like a lot. At the time, it was the third largest audience in the country. Okay. But the, claim to fame for Uptown Theater is the size of it overall. Mm -hmm. It actually takes up 46,000 square feet of property, mm -hmm. which is more than an acre of land. Right. An acre of land is 43,550. So the name Acre of Seats is actually not an exaggeration, it's an understatement. Yeah, it's pretty it's yeah. a lot bigger than an acre. So it's kind of incredible. Actually, when it opened in the, uh, 1925, there was a line of 12,000 people in line mm -hmm. to, to get in as a first audience. So only obviously about a third of them got in, mm -hmm. which shows how big of a, of a poll it was. And um, something also incredible about the Uptown Theater that I find um, is that by the late 20s, over 20 million people have been in the audience at one time or another. It has seen 20 million people as visitors in the late 20s. It opened in 1925. If you do the math, yeah. that's over 4,600 or 4, sold out shows. So if you divide that out, that's almost 1,000 sold out shows a year for five years. It's, it's kind of mind-boggling because it was only 365 days a year last time I checked. Yeah, you know, you are our historical know-all. <laughs> you definitely do know a lot I've about done a it. little bit of research. Yeah, I mean, I have to ask you though, in the piece it said that the theater was recently purchased, right. correct? Now, what's the plans for the new renovated Uptown Theater? Well, here's the thing. It closed in 1981, like I mentioned in the piece. Mm -hmm. Jam Productions, who also owns the Riviera Theater in Uptown, purchased the theater a few years ago for a little over $3 million, okay. which sounds pretty cheap. Mm -hmm. But it's estimated that it's going to cost over $40 million to renovate it. Wow. It, it's really, really run down, and it's going to need just a top-to-bottom renovation. So the company's kind of holding off while the economy is kind of in a downturn, and they're hoping that once the economy maybe starts coming back, they'll renovate it. And hopefully, if they open this thing in the next few years or down the road, if it creates even a fraction of the amount of surge as it did mm -hmm. back when it originally opened, this can really pull Uptown up to prosperity once again. It's really amazing. So $40 million to renovate this theater, is it because they're trying to bring back, they're trying to keep the original wood, material, seats? What, what's well, costing? Well, so when much? you think about it, you can't just replace one seat. You're like, right. going to have to replace all 4,300, and that right. just adds up. And as you see in some of the pictures, the place is absolutely massive. This is just a fraction of how big. The whole place is like an entire city block behind this photograph. Right. It's a massive theater with three humongous lobbies that go up 50 feet. As you can see, there are massive lobbies. You can see how lavish it is, how similar it is to the right. Chicago Theater. If you've ever been Gorgeous. to the Chicago Theater, very lavish, very extravagant. So the cost to renovate that, almost everything will probably need to be replaced or at least refurbished. So that's why it costs so much. Mike, thank you so much for being here. We really learned a lot about Uptown, and you did do your research. <laughs> I did. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Now that we know exactly where Uptown has been, let's take a look at where it's going. After the break, we'll take a look at a place that's been in Uptown for 34 years, and it's changing right along with the neighborhood. How does it do that? We're gonna take a look at one of the oldest tattoo parlors in the city, the Tattoo Factory.